something so small, something so quiet, something so buried deep, like a seed. But you have changed me. You have changed everything. Something so small, something so small. Welcome. We're so glad you could join us here today. My name is Adrielle Booker. This is my husband, Ryan, and we'll be your host for this service. As we get started, I'd like to welcome Ani Sharon Miniakon to share an acknowledgement of country with us. Now, as I invite her to begin, we would also love to know where you're watching from. Can you please share with us in the comments where you call home? Thank you for joining us today virtually for the International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Service. My name is Ani Sharon Minikon. I'm a Torres Strait Islander woman. My heritage is from Uka Island, part of the Eastern Island Group. I am the Indigenous Coordinator of St John's Anglican Church in Glebe and the Lay Minister for Scar Tree Indigenous Ministry with my husband, Reverend Ray Minikon. Our family have lived and worked on Gadigal land of Eora Nation over 30 years. And it is on their lands we would like to acknowledge country, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, on whose land we are hosting virtually today. We acknowledge their elders, both past, present and emerging, and thank them for their custodianship as we continuing to live, work, thrive on their lands. I acknowledge all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations who joined us today and acknowledge your ancestors and elders also. Today, a special acknowledgement to all mothers and fathers and their families who have experienced loss of their loved ones. I pray that the Spirit will comfort you all until we meet and be with our little ones for all eternity. Let us continue together, walk to remember them. Blessing and love 
from Auntie Sharon Minico. Thank you, Auntie Sharon. So grateful for you. Friends like you, Adrian and I know the pain of losing a child. Over the course of our childbearing years, we lost four of our babies, all at different stages of our pregnancy. Our losses have taught us many things, but one thing we know for certain, no loss is the same. We also believe no life is too small to matter. Thank you for saying hello in the comments. It's great to see people from all over Australia and New Zealand and Asia as well as people in the Americas and in Europe and Africa. Wow, what an amazing opportunity to be able to come together like this, not just around our losses, but also around the hope God provides. You know, when Ryan and I lost our first child, we didn't know how to grieve. We didn't know how much was too much or not enough. Grief makes us clumsy. Those who have lost and also those who want to support those who have lost. We all feel clumsy. All we knew at the time was that we had found ourselves in unexpectedly deep pain. I remember those days clearly. I wanted to crawl into a cave, find a quiet place, and just curl up and never wake up. You know, it's, it's not that I actually wanted to die. I just wasn't sure I knew how to live under all that weight of my sadness and my collapsed expectations. We had no blueprint for how to grieve, no roadmap for what was socially acceptable. We felt alone, disenfranchised, misunderstood, confused, angry. Sometimes we even felt abandoned. You know, this is not a commentary on our friends and family. It's just simply the nature of grief. It's profoundly personal and it cuts to the heart in ways that feel so isolating, even when we're not actually alone. Our hope for this service is that it will help you provide a way for families to mark their loss. Today, we want to affirm your suffering is real. We want to recognize the importance of holding space for grief, the importance of normalizing how we talk about pregnancy loss, and the importance of dismantling the stigma around miscarriage, stillbirth, infertility, adoption loss, medical termination, ectopic pregnancy, and so many other forms of perinatal loss. We want you to find the grace to heal. And today, we also want to honor your baby. While we don't know the particulars of your loss, we do know the universal threads of grief and how debilitating and disheartening it can be. Everyone grieves, but not everyone grieves with hope. Hope makes all the difference, friends. Grief is wild like the sea, but it does not need to destroy us. We can't conquer it, but we can navigate it. And, and we're convinced we can find Jesus there too. This service will take us through a journey of lament together, reflection, thanksgiving that we're not alone, and hope in the presence and promise of Jesus. There will be time to light a candle, and we invite you to participate by lighting your own candle as you watch from home. Scripture says that sorrow may last through the night, but joy will come in the morning. It tells us there will be a day when there is no more pain, and all our tears are wiped away as God makes all things new. You know, tucked within that promise of what's to come, is also an acknowledgement that right now, there's still pain. There are still tears. Our prayer is that you would feel met by God who sees and hears and holds our pain. May you catch a glimpse of the one who pursues you, never gives up on you, and will never abandon you even when you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death. Now as we begin, may you sense God draw near to you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today, hearts heavy and in need of your healing. The loss we've experienced has left us feeling undone. We ask that you would bind our brokenness together again that you would stitch up the fragments of our pain, be it new or from a time or times gone by, into something resembling wholeness. There will always be an ache. And Lord, we ask that you would fill it. Lord, as we explore our pain, Lord, may we remember you are with us. May we feel your tangible spirit 
abiding with us, holding us close. May your love provide a hedge of protection around our hearts and our minds. And Lord, may we give you glory and bless you even in the middle of our pain. We thank you for seeing us. We thank you for hearing us. And most of all, we thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. We give you everything we have, including our pain. And we ask that you would take it, Lord. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Lamentations 3, 19 to 24. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Hi, I'm Dr. Mikel Harris, and I am so grateful to be here with you to be part of this beautiful service. On this special day of remembrance, I celebrate the fact that you are here. To every mother, father, family member, loved one as friend whose heart aches, thank you for joining in today to honor the reality of precious babies' lives to honor the reality of your baby's life and to honor the reality of your grief. Experiencing the loss of an unborn child is not an easy road to travel. This beautiful and profound anticipation of him or her gave rise to the beautiful and profound bond formed with him or her. And it is this beautiful and indescribable bond that gives rise to a profound grief. Grief's road is a road that for many of you has felt lonely, overwhelming, and sometimes unbearable. It's a road filled with ups and downs, twists and turns, incredible depths and unanswered questions. Yet here you are still standing still facing the hurt, still taking steps to move forward through the winding journey of grief. Each of you is a warrior, choosing to hold on to hope even as hope seemingly slipped through your fingers. You are courage, part of a circle you never wanted to be a part of. You are strength, awaking each day with expectancy and longing in your heart. And you are hope, shining a light in the dark spaces that is grief. Grief is crushing, yes. And whether or not you recognize it in this moment, grief can also be transformative, helping to spring forth endurance, resilience, and yes, even hope. So today, I challenge you to survive as you grieve, to grow as you grieve, and to heal as you grieve. I want each of you to know today on this special day of remembrance that I see you. God sees you. I acknowledge your pain. God acknowledges your pain. And I grieve alongside you. God grieves alongside you. You are not alone. May you literally feel the warmth of God's presence as you continue to walk down grief's winding road. God bless you. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God, when can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. Why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him 
my Savior and my God. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. By night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. From Psalm 42. Take my home, take my land, break my legs so I can stand. Run my vision so I can see. You can break my body, but you can break me. Take my word and hurt my pride. Take my money to survive. Buy my future and take my peace. You can break my comfort, but you can't break me. Oh. Psalm 139, 7 through 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is a light to you. Psalm 139, seven through 12. Psalm 118, one through seven. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, 
His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. This is a short reading from Grace Like Scarlet. I'm reading from chapter three, The Spectacle of Heaven. Do you remember the feeling of your skin or the color of the walls or the sound of your gasp the moment the bottom first dropped out? For me, it was an ordinary Wednesday afternoon in April inside a tiny windowless room where a still black screen confronted us. It should have been alight with the fluttering heart of our 13-week-old baby girl, but it wasn't. It was silent. The pain of losing a child starts by breaking your heart and then courses through every single vein and vessel, consuming your body until your bones ache. All of the events over the course of the next few days are mere details. The newborn's cry echoing down the hospital hallway while I waited for my DNC, the argument over gender testing with an insensitive surgeon, the dollar store dolphin print hanging crookedly above my examination bed, the nurse with kind eyes, she loved me, the way my husband looked like Jesus and reminded me I was not alone, the statistics and the charts and the pumping of needles, the shuffling in and out of clinics, the homemade cookies on my doorstep, the words spelling from my fingers and the whisper from heaven that seemed shattered around my feet. The image of Jesus carrying me in my exhaustion, but all of this together just felt trivial, like matchsticks on a mountain of my grief, folding together to make a story that I hated. It was a story that was bearing my name. How does a mother learn to breathe again after her baby dies? One breath in, one breath out, and then again, and again. Suffering does not choose the weak or the strong, the faithful or the faithless. It chooses the human. When you are caught by waves that are larger than your capacity to stay above the surface, you've got to allow your heart to feel the pain all the way down to the bottom so that you can know when you get there that you're still alive. There's still hope. It's from the bottom that we can begin to heal our way back up to the surface. The human heart is fragile. Yes, but it's also more resilient than we like to give ourselves credit for. The deep is not our our enemy or a thing to be resisted, but it does command our attention. No matter what form it takes, suffering always commands our attention. It will not be alleviated by comparison to greater or lesser suffering, or even your perception of it. Your pain is your pain, and it deserves the dignity of recognition. That is where healing begins. Naming our suffering does not mean we become defined by it. It means honestly acknowledging our need in the presence of Jesus. Our humility frees us to receive his grace. It's his beauty for our ashes, the great exchange, God's answer to our pain. Our present suffering is the very best reminder that life gives us more than we can handle. And that, friends, is why we need Jesus. I invite you to join me for the prayer of St. Francis before the crucifix. Most high, glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart and give me true faith, certain hope and perfect charity. Sense and knowledge, Lord, that I may carry out your holy and true command. I now invite you to light your own candle. Um, Share your baby or baby's names in the comments below and take a moment to reflect on God's gift of faith, hope and love.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. This is a song that I wrote when I was feeling the conflicting emotions of um, both feeling tremendous sadness and loss and grief in the wake of losing our first baby to miscarriage and and then at the same time feeling the joy and anticipation and and nervousness of being pregnant again and just not knowing how to pray not knowing what to feel and just needing God to come be God um, over me
It is always a privilege to pray for moms, and I've written a special one just for us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you to pray for moms. You created each one of them uniquely and beautifully, just like you created each and every one of their precious babies. And because you created them, Lord, you know the very depths of love that each one carries in their heart. You carefully knit mothers together with a desire to nurture and care for their babies. I humbly ask that you show each mom praying together tonight that their motherhood is seen and valued by you. I ask that you reveal to each one of them that while they may not be nurturing their baby on earth, that you see their heart full of love and give each mom an unmistakable peace that their child is safe with you. Please assure the mother who is aching with grief that you are the God who sees. And I ask you to comfort her in a way that she knows without a doubt that the comfort she feels could only be you. Lord, you promised to be near to the brokenhearted. I ask that you fulfill that promise to each woman gathered in prayer right now, filling her with supernatural peace that, can, that you can only give. There is no peace like yours, God. There is no strength like yours. There is no healing like yours. Holy Spirit, I ask that when moms feel like their suffering is too great to bear, that you would intercede and give them the strength to survive the next moment, the next breath, the next day, the next month, and the next year. Guide all grieving moms toward the unmistakable hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Jesus, you are the one who makes it all possible for us to be with our children again and to walk on this side of heaven with a renewed sense of hope. Lord, help each woman release the burden of grief she carries and cast it onto your strong, capable, and faithful shoulders. Assure her that she is never alone, never forgotten, and she is cherished by the same Father in heaven that watches over her baby. I lift this in your heavenly name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I come before you on behalf of fathers who are grieving the loss of their child. Language is insufficient to describe the sorrow we feel. Why, Lord, would you allow the death of our precious children? We can't comprehend how the loss of our sons and daughters could be part of your redemptive plan. We believe that you're a God of mercy, but this does not feel merciful. We believe you're good. But this does not feel good. We believe that you're in control, but we struggle in this chaos. Yet in the midst of our pain and confusion, I thank you that you invite us to be honest. You don't ask us to repress our heartache or rush our sorrow, but you have authorized our grieving and you even weep with us as we weep. So Lord, I ask that you would give other fathers the freedom to wrestle honestly with the deep and complicated grief they're experiencing. Help them to be like the men of the Bible, like Job, like David, even your son Jesus, who all voiced their sorrow and difficulties as they fought to trust you. And God, I ask that you would continue to extend your grace as you patiently walk alongside us as we grieve, even when we direct our anger and our frustration and our sadness towards you. Lord, I also thank you for these men who are the most courageous examples of fatherhood. They're walking through the darkest shadows of parenting. The greatest fear has come true. The, the most horrible nightmare that a dad can endure. There is no pain like this. Yet in their grief, through their tears, and even in their anger, they are proclaiming the worth of their children. The pain that they feel and the pain that they express is a testimony to how valuable their children are and how good of a dad they are. And so as they continue to navigate this messy and chaotic terrain of grief, comfort them 
Bring them people who can walk alongside them with understanding. And would you instill a hope that holds fast to this future promise that we all ache for? The day that you will return to make all things new, to wipe away our tears, and to erase death once and for all. Sustain us through your Spirit and by your Son, who knows our pain, who has done something about it, and will one day redeem even the most horrible of circumstances. Amen. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Mark 10, 14 through 16. And now let us pray for couples dealing with infertility and secondary infertility. Father God, we pray for all those who find themselves still in the waiting space of infertility today. We want to acknowledge and remember that being unable to conceive is also a form of loss and grief. Father, for all those who find themselves caught in a cycle of hope and disappointment, would you gently lift their heads today and help them to fix their gaze upon you? Would you be their comfort in the midst of this sadness? May they sense you drawing them close. Would you be their peace in the midst of tests, treatments, questions and decisions? May they find you guiding their every step. Would you be their strength when they feel weak and battle weary? May they remember that you are the one that fights for them. And would you be their healing when they feel crushed under the weight of broken dreams? May they discover that you are the God who makes all things new. Most of all, Father, would you be their hope for the future? And may they know such an unshakable, incredible hope in you. In Jesus' name, we pray all of these things. Amen. This is from Isaiah chapter 43. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. God, we come before you today and we thank you so much for the life of our child gone too soon to you, Lord, but we thank you for allowing them to be a part of our life and our story and our families. God, I pray that over time that you would continue to give us ways to weave them into our life, Lord. Help us to remember, God, that this is not an end, that we will be reunited one day, God, with you and what a joyous day it will be. I thank you for the gift of eternity and the hope of that day. God, I pray that you would be with our families, our spouses and our children and our loved ones, whose grief and sorrow and sadness and having to say goodbye has been deep. Father, I thank you for catching all of our tears. And I pray, God, that your peace and your comfort would draw us closer together as a family. That this loss and this heartache would be something, God, that you would use to make us stronger, that would make us love deeper and have greater joy. And God, I just pray that as a family, we would know your comfort, heavy like a blanket upon us. I pray especially for our children who have had to endure this loss. I thank you for showing us what it looks like to have faith like a child. God, help us all to trust you in that way. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to honor you and to honor the precious life that has touched us so deeply. And God, I pray that you would go before us as a family every day 
with your grace and your compassion covering over us. And we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Will you bow in prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us opportunity to gather together virtually to celebrate you and honor our babies who are gone to heaven far too soon. Please bring them comfort and peace. To the families and friends who are grieving, give them the right things to say to their loved ones and bring them comfort and knowing that they're not alone. Lord, I ask that you surround everyone under the sound of my voice with your amazing grace and love and grant everyone your peace that passes all understanding. Your word says that if we cast our cares upon you, you would care for us. So Lord, please comfort us. Bring healing to those with broken hearts. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for keeping us in our right minds, even when we thought we were losing it and may have had some bouts of anxiety or depression, but you kept us you kept us right close to you and we draw near to you and we came back to you, Lord. So thank you for that. Thank you for calming our pain and easing our fears and bringing us a newfound joy and a newfound faith in you, Lord. Now, as we move forward with our days, let us not forget the babies that were here for a moment, that we remember their lives forever. We love you and we will continue to honor you. And we ask that you continue to watch over us as we live our lives, um, as you're watching over us, but also to the glory of God. These and all other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 8, 35 and 37 through 39. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in all the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Before we read the benediction over you in closing, we want to share a few resources with you to help you in your grief journey. If you visit our website, babylastremembrance.com, you'll find my wife's book, Grace Like Scarlet, Griefing with Hope After Miscarriage and Loss, which also includes a section at the back for all the fathers that I wrote. You will find our pregnancy loss community, our Scarlet Stories. You can join us there or one of our deep dive support groups. You can also access devotionals and all sorts of resources. You'll find there on babylossremembrance.com um, resources from all the contributors that have joined in our service today. There are incredible support groups on Facebook. There are books, podcasts, even a conference. So many, there's so many wonderful resources to help you on your journey of grieving with hope. Don't worry, we'll put all the details at the end of the video for you. But please, friends, do not try and navigate your grief alone. And now in closing, we want to say thank you for spending this beautiful time with us. May you receive this blessing with the great love of God. Friends, please receive this as a prayer. As you go, May you find your way forward with loving, supportive community and the promise of a God who never leaves you in your suffering. May the God who holds all things together hold you together as you move through your grief. May you never forget your little one and the precious gift of life that you got to experience through your baby's presence. May you grant yourself permission to feel and to be fully awake to your suffering. May your soul be nurtured, your spirit renewed, and your body be strengthened as you take time 
to breathe deeply. May you learn to embrace the waves of grief as they come, knowing they are God's sweet reminder that your baby's life matters and that your own heart matters. When those waves of grief come, may you not be pummeled, but may you dive deep and find Jesus there in the deep along with you. Mm. May you know how loved you are and that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. May you know that you are not blessed because you mourn, but you are blessed because you can receive God's comfort in your mourning. On the hard days, may you light a candle in your darkness and invite God's presence to fill you with light again. When you feel alone, may you be reminded of this moment we're having together and the great cloud of witnesses that see you and affirm the gift of life. May you go now with the courage to wrestle with God, bring him your hardest questions, your deepest fears, your most dizzying confusion, and may you find God in the midst of it all. And as you heal, may you become one who makes space for other people's grief and come alongside them in their pain. May you be generous with your listening and generous with your care. And may you not be afraid to say your baby's name and tell your baby's story. May your grief shape you to become more kind, more empathetic, more present with those who suffer. And most of all, may you go knowing that hope does not disappoint and love never fails. Amen. King who speaks peace to nations. You are the Father who runs down to the child. You are the warrior who comes with hands to heal. You are the strong one who
zombie 